I've been arguing to make this game for for a 12 years. I mean, this is the game that, as a gamer, you're like, man, I wish I could make that game, because if I made that game, I'd do X, Y, Z. And it was very easy for me to be completely consumed by this project, and I, I have been for a long time, four or five years now, I've been consumed by this. This is my favorite game in college, which is why I got the degree I got. Then I came to Fraxis to make strategy games. Working on Civ Rev, that was when Sid and I worked by far the closest together. He was really part of our weekly design discussion that we had on the game where everybody kind of pitched their ideas. And he kind of always spoke from the player's point of view, which to me is key. And then, of course, he had this passion for XCOM that, that exceeded all others. And it really made sense to kind of give him a chance to, uh, to build on that. It's not like Sid, you know, crowned me with a scepter and, you know, said, go forth and be a designer. But it was the sort of thing where he and I working together, I think, gave him the confidence to say, like, oh, I think Jack will be fine, you know, which, you know, I wasn't. And maybe he knew I wouldn't be. Maybe he knew he was throwing me in deep water by doing that. I have this uh, lazy boy chair in my office, and whenever Jake feels the need to talk, he'll appear in that chair. And <laughs> this right here is a perfect recreation of many, many days and nights. Except I'd, I'd be, uh, it'd be tears. Be okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> We had noticed that in almost every development project, uh, we would go through this period of time, which we call the Valley of Despair, which is you uh, start a project with uh, very high hopes and expectations, and some of those are realized and some of those are not. That was like when I was waking up in the morning and like, God forbid, I, I'm blessed to have a job as a game designer, but I was like not even wanting going to work because I was, I knew I was so far off the path at that point. I'd iterated so much that it didn't even look like XCOM. It's the classic problem that we have of uh, taking an idea that, you know, was great 15, 20 years ago and kind of bringing it into the present. What is today's audience expecting? I went to Sid and he said, if you're not happy with this current version, let's just throw all this stuff out and let's start over. And so Sid and I made this XCOM board game, basically. And it was with dice, and it was with little Risk army men and tanks and cards. We did that for about two weeks, every afternoon. And then we got to a point where Sid and I disagreed about the direction that it should go. Should it go uh, more real time or should it go more turn-based? And so he went home over the weekend and wrote a turn-based XCOM strategy prototype. And then I wrote what became the genesis for what became XCOM's strategy layer. And I still went back and stole a lot of Sid's ideas, um, but it was just one of, those, one of those moments where he and I working together was, I mean, there was no way I could have done it on my own. Towards the end, the work was so hard that I think everybody on the team, myself included, was like, let's just put this thing out. Like, let's just get this over with. And I didn't, I honestly didn't think that I didn't know that it was going to do as well as it did. I think at one point you said uh, a game is a series of heartbreaking losses or something like that. Like heartbreaking disappointments, that's what it is. You said uh, playing a game is a series of interesting decisions. Making a game is a series of heartbreaking disappointments. <laughs> I said that, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good summary. That's more cynical than Sid normally is, but that was in Sid's Valley of Despair, I think. When it comes to measuring up to Sid, it's not something that I want, and it's not even something that I think is probably even possible. And it's nicer just to be like, oh, good, we have God in-house. That's wonderful. Like, uh, I'm not going to be God, but it's great that he's on my team. And Jake really had a unique commitment and enthusiasm and knowledge for this project. I don't think another person could have, could have made the game that he made. I'm often asked, how do I, how do I become a game designer? Um, and, you know, our, our, our simple answer is design a game. There, there are a lot of opportunities, actually, in the world. Today's game design, places like Steam, Xbox Live, it's actually not a bad time to be an independent game designer. You know, we, we do good game designers, more and more of them.